Hi guys, thanks for joining. Today I will be talking about trichoscopy guided biopsies. Let's go! Why should we perform a trichoscopy guided biopsy? We have performed biopsies of the scalp for many years and it was okay, so why we should change our approach? Well, I believe that we should change our approach because with the trichoscopy guided biopsy we are able to get for the pathologist the most representative sample and with this we will get a good report which will be useful for our clinical practice. We do not really need a trichoscopy guided biopsy in every patient and in every disease because, for example, here in psoriasis, regardless from where we take the biopsy, the result will be always the same. However, in a patient like this with lichen plano pilaris, if we take a biopsy from the cicatricial area, then all we will receive in the pathology report, report will be fibrosis, which will not lead us further in the diagnosis of the disease. So we need to perform a biopsy from the trichoscopy most specific area in this patient so, we can, so that we can get a specific information in the pathology report. So how do we perform a trichoscopy guided biopsy? Well, in the first place, we perform a regular trichoscopy and we can do it either with a handheld or with a video dermoscope and the other steps which I'll be showing now will be with a video dermoscope but you can perform this uh, exactly in the same way with a handheld dermoscope. When we see a typical abnormality in the trichoscopy image of the patient, then we mark a circle to mark area where the abnormality is more, most abundant. And in most cases, this is a circle in a, of a diameter of approximately 8 to 10 millimeters. Once we have the circle, we then need to perform another trichoscopy to check whether really we have in the circle the trichoscopy features which we wanted to catch with the biopsy. And this is a tricky part because when we use a marker, then this marker leaves a wet spot. And we need to leave some time for the marker to dry because otherwise the image will become not visible anymore and the same may happen to our dermoscope. So we need a little bit time for the ink to dry and then we redo trichoscopy. So we have our circle, we perform trichoscopy. If we are happy, then we go to the next step. If we are not happy because our circle is outside of the important trichoscopy features which we wanted to catch, we can redo the procedure and we make another circle and we repeat as long as we need to be happy what would we have what we have in our circle. So now we are ready to perform the trichoscopy guided uh, biopsy. I have marked the circle which is correct with a darker marker, a thicker marker, just to make sure that we make the biopsy from the correct uh, area. There are different ways to mark the correct circle if we have more than one, uh, but this is my preferred way of doing this. We of course start with the local anesthesia, then we perform the punch biopsy and two things to remember. First, the biopsy punch should be not less than 4 millimeters because a smaller biopsy will be not sufficient for a pathology report. And second, the biopsy needs to be deep enough so that we have all the hair follicles in the biopsy. And then we of course stop the bleeding. Bleeding on the scalp is usually quite intensive because there are many blood vessels in this area. So if this is your first uh, scalp biopsy, it is good to have somebody there to help. Many of us do not use stitches to close the wound uh, after uh, every biopsy, but uh, I think that in case of a biopsy on the scalp area, it is necessary to use stitches to close the wound. Before I continue with the trichoscopy guided biopsies, 
I would like to thank three people thanks to whom you see this uh, video today. Two of them are Maria Mitev and Anton Latosti. They are the authors of the first description of a trichoscopy guided biopsy. And since then, many of us are performing this procedure. And I would also like to thank uh, our main dermatosurgeon in our department, Dr. Olga Varshavik Hensel, who has helped to record this video for you today. So now to summarize, we always start every procedure with a clinical evaluation. Then we perform regular trichoscopy, either with a handheld dermoscope or with a video dermoscope. We mark a circle in the area where we find the most typical features for a disease and about how to find the best place for a biopsy. I will make a next video about this topic. Once we have the circle, we then, then double check whether this circle includes the most typical features which we wanted to have in our biopsy. If not, then we repeat the whole procedure and then we take a punch biopsy with a punch which is not less than four millimeters in size. With this, I am finishing this video today. And if you would like to hear more about hair diseases or about trichoscopy, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Thanks a lot. See you next time.